I want to talk from the topic today, I would if I could. When you look at a few people say, I would if I could, you may be seated. Father, thank you for this word. Be glorified in Jesus' name. As we are um, talking about brotherly love and talking about being a good neighbor and uh, talking about ministering to people, um, I really want to put into your mind um, something from the perspective of the paralytic, uh, the paralytic man uh, versus the people who brought him. Um, and I want you to really understand what it is that you are called to do and who you are called to be in people's lives. And I said this last week, and I'll say it again, that if you are not really thinking about who you can reach, we're really missing the whole point when it comes to the gospel. If somebody's not on your mind all the time, if someone is not on your prayer list. If you don't have, like last week, we had a lot of people who filled out their name, filled out people's names and put them on a fish and we put them, and I actually meant to bring that in here, but I forgot, but we, we put them in a net and we are praying over those different people's names um, this month because if we are just having a good time in church and singing the little cute songs and wearing the little cute outfits and just little, all these different things, cute live streaming, and no one is getting saved, then what is the purpose of of it. If we're not here to be able to point people to a better life and to a better way, then all that we do is pointless. Everything that we do has no point. And I am this particular season of my life, not just right now, but even period, I don't like to waste time. Y'all feel like that? I just don't want to waste time. If I'm going to do something, I want to know why am I doing it? Why am I here? Y'all didn't come out of here today just to hear my opinions about anything, to hear what I have to say about anything. We want to know what is it God wants to do? What is it that God wants to do through me? And how can we best do this together? Look at someone and say, let's do this together. The church is called, and I wrote this down, the church is called to be or to have the great commission not the great invitation. The Great Commission signifies that all of us are called to go out into the world. We are called to go out and to compel men or women to come to Christ. We've been doing the Great Invitation. The Great Invitation is come to my church. The Great Invitation is come to my program. The Great Invitation is come to this or to come to that. But we are supposed to be the Great Commission, meaning all of us are supposed to be sharing the gospel with somebody, sharing the good news and the gospel is good news. Good news. Gospel is not beat news. Meaning the gospel is not designed to beat you up about your life. The gospel is designed to point you to a better way. How can we show you, all of us, no matter where you are in your life, we came to Jesus not to be beat up. We came to Jesus because we wanted a better life. Is there anybody who felt that way that I wanted something better? And for those of you who are here today, you didn't come here to be beat up. Whatever it is that you're experiencing in your life, Whatever it is you're going through in your life, you don't need me to remind you about it. You need to know how can you overcome it, how can you get through it, and more importantly, how can I help somebody else once I overcome it? So this is what this message is about today as far as this particular scripture. It says in verse 1, it says that when the people heard Jesus had come to Capernaum, and it says that when the people heard that Jesus was in the area and that with Jesus in town, it says the people came from everywhere. I don't know how long it took for them to find out that Jesus was in the room. It says that when they found out that Jesus was in the room or in this particular area, it says people came from everywhere to this particular spot that he was, so much so that all the people came because they were desperate desperate for something, desperate for God, desperate for his presence, desperate for Jesus in such a way that there was no room, there was no more room for anybody else to get in. I long, I long, I long, I long for the day that people are, can't, they're standing room only for people who come to see Jesus and not to see a show, not to see a preacher, not to see a pastor, but people come here desperate. There is a difference in an okay service and a desperate
desperate service. There is something different in about okay songs and desperate songs. I know the difference because when you get desperate people who are hungry for God and need something from God, it shifts heaven and earth. It causes doubters to be silent. It causes people who are skeptics to be silenced. When people are desperate and not comfortable, people come running into the house saying, I had to get there. I had to get to Jesus. I needed something from him. I needed a touch from him. Don't talk to me right now. Don't text me right now. Don't send me any notes right now. Don't tell me to look at anybody right now because I need him. I need him in my life. I need him in my heart. I need a touch from him. I need something different from him. I didn't come to a one o'clock service just to sit here. I came to be changed. I came to be changed in my heart, changed in my mind, changed in my emotion. I'm so desperate for him. I don't care if you don't even come to church with me because I need him. Somebody say, I need him. I'm desperate for him. I'm talking about when you get desperate people, when you get desperate people who are desperate for God, things change. Things happen. Things move. Things start to begin to shift because I don't want ordinary. I want or extraordinary. I need something different. I didn't come here to be entertained by you. That's what desperate people say. I didn't come if y'all sing or you don't sing. I don't really care. I came to see Jesus, period. And we need more desperate. Look at somebody say, let's just be desperate. So these people came from everywhere. I don't know where they came from. These people came from everywhere. It says when these people came, it says that these people came into the room and came to this particular location and nobody else could get in because they wanted to see Jesus. Couldn't wait to see him. Couldn't wait to get near him. When is the last time you woke up and said, Lord, I can't wait to pray? When's the last time you woke up and said, Lord, I can't wait to worship you? When's the last time you said, Lord, before I look on Snapchat, before I look on Facebook, before I look on Instagram, before I look at somebody else's life, Lord, give me my life. Lord, you are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my own hands in total praise to you. I honor you and I glory. When is the last time you came to church desperate and not des and not desperate and not messy? Amen. When's the last time you stopped texting people in church and start texting Jesus? He's got a number. <laughs> Call them up. Tell them what you want. <laughs> That's what they said. If you're sick and you can't get well, call them. Tell them what you want. Look at somebody and say, call them. Come on, Drake. Call it on the cell phone. Just call them. <laughs> when you're desperate, things change. So people got around the room, unless I stay there too long, people got around the room and says nobody else could get in because they were desperate for Jesus. And they got there and they were so desperate for him there was no room. And it says, and he was preaching the word of them. He was preaching the word to them. And verse 3 says, and the people came and they brought to him a paralyzed man, a paralyzed person. And this is what I want to talk about from the paralyzed perspective because this whole idea of them bringing a paralyzed man to Jesus. Can you imagine what it's like to have to depend on somebody else to do what you can't do? My Lord, my Lord. We in the westernized church take all this for granted. Because you can come late if you want to. I come at 1 o'clock, I still have a seat. Come to choir rehearsal if I want to, don't want to. I can still sing on Sunday. They ain't going to say nothing to me. I can come and I can serve. I can not show up for a few weeks. Don't matter. I can still just jump right back in where I am. I can come to a small group or not come to a small group. It don't matter. I'm still a member of the church. I got y'all quiet. <laughs> I can do whatever I want to do, live any type of way. Ain't nobody going to say anything to me. It doesn't really matter because this is just what I do. I don't have to pray to do this. I was born to do this. I'm talented. I'm gifted. I know how to do this. I just know how to go through the motions and do this. But people who are missionaries in foreign countries, they give their life to this thing. That means that when they go into these different areas, they could, that day they wake up, it could be their last day living because they are killed. They are, their lives are really literally on the altar where that means that if they go out that day and they say, if I perish, let me perish. That means they are so sold out for Christ that they have given up amenities. They have given up cell phone service. They've given up family life, all this stuff to say that I am committed to getting people saved in foreign 
foreign countries who people who don't even do you know there was a there was a video somewhere I saw I wish I could have found the video today there was a video of some of some Chinese people that uh, some foreigners of some some Americans has sent over Bibles to them and there's this video clip of the Chinese people opening up Bibles and as soon as they open up these boxes of Bibles they started to cry and they start to hug each other because they were excited to receive the word that's all not a car not a house not a new Instagram follower not a new tweet they were excited to receive the word because the word is so rare that you get killed for carrying a Bible you have to have churches in places that nobody can find you because if they find you they will kill you and destroy you but for us I got people on Snapchat I can follow. I got people on Periscope I can follow. I got people on Facebook Live I can follow. I can click in and click off at will. But for them, they have to worship in secret. But those of us who can worship all the time, we don't. Because it's become so accustomed to us. It's just, just like, yeah, whatever. But this paralyzed person could not move. Could not do anything. Because he had to depend on somebody else. And to be paralyzed is uncomfortable. Because to be paralyzed means, and, and, and for those of us, and when you look at the paralyzed, and when you look at how they're set up, it says that his upper body is fine. His legs are actually okay. But he has lost all mobility. He has lost all movement in his legs where he has to depend on somebody else to pick him up. He has to depend on somebody else to cause him to move. Because he cannot, the man cannot move. He's been laying in his bed so long. He's been laying there that every time he makes a move, somebody has to reposition him. Somebody has to move him. He wants to move forward, but it's hard to move forward when you can't. You, you want to move. You want to move into something different, but it's hard to move into something different. We have to depend on somebody else to make the move for you. And I want to suggest to you today that many of you all are called to paralyze people. Yeah. All of our church stuff is okay. But there are a lot of you who are called to paralyze people who you keep saying, I keep inviting them to church, but they won't come. They can't come because they're paralyzed. I keep inviting them to I keep inviting them to come on Sunday. I keep inviting them. I'm saying, hey, you come. They say, I can't move unless you bring me. How am I going to get here if I'm paralyzed? How am I going to move forward if I'm paralyzed? I'm trying to move, but how am I going to move if I don't have anybody to move? me and there are many of us who are on this side of church having a good time and we're sitting there passing all the paralyzed people because we're all well Jesus said I didn't come for the well I came for the sick because the sick need a physician and I want to ask how sick are you You act like you cool. Yes. You act like you straight. I ain't talking about your code. I'm talking about how sick is your mind? Yes. How sick is your thoughts? Yes. How sick are your emotions? Yes. How sick is your anger? Yes. How sick are your friends? How sick is your circle? Is, are, are you contagious? Mm. What you have going on with you, is it really contagious? Are people infected by being around you? Are people messed up by being connected to you? How sick really are you? Are we infected by your presence? Are we infected? Are my friendship circle infected because of the sick things that you don't want to deal with? And you won't say you're sick and you keep acting like you're okay and you keep medicating yourself instead of asking for a physician to help you? Will you look at someone and say, how sick are you? They don't want to ask. They're like, I'm well. I'm okay. But you're really not. Because your thoughts keep you up at night. You're at work, but you're really not there. 50% of you are at church, but you ain't here. Your body's here, but your mind's not. Because you're sick. And you won't tell anybody because you've done church for so long that you know church, but you don't know well. You know church structure. You know how to do church. You know how to look spiritual, but don't know how to live it. All right. 
I'm struggling between my sick person and the well person. I'm struggling. I have that Jacob tendency going on inside of me. There's an Israel. There's a kingdom inside of me. But there's a trickster on the other side of me. And nobody knows my trickster size because they always talk about my kingdom size. But when, when, the, when the kingdom size is not working, the trickster is in activation. And there's a sick person. I'm trying to be well, but I'm struggling every single Sunday between being well and being sick. I'm trying to be well, but can't be well because the sick thoughts keep pulling me back. And I'm in a tug of war every single week between my well side and my sick side and it really depends on which person decides to show up that day which person you get the sick me or the well me do you know how many preachers are preaching sick how many people are dancing sick laying hands on people sick and you know that's why I love when people make fun of Michael Jackson but everywhere Michael Jackson went he had something on his face to make sure he didn't get anybody else's germs and there are sometimes you need to put something on your body and put something on your face to make sure I don't get what you got because I've overcome my own struggles and I have fought too hard to get where I am and I can't be infected with what you don't want to deal with because I'm trying to make sure I'm better somebody say I want to be better I've got to be better I cannot be infected at this point in my life <laughs> hallelujah I'm coming hard today so it says it says that he was coming and it says and they brought this man to Jesus and the first thing I want to talk about is and he said I would if I could this is a paralyzed man person he's saying this to these friends he said I, they, they came to him Pastor Guillaume they said to him they said you know what Jesus is here I mean uh, Jesus is preaching Mr. Bryson, didn't, pre didn't, didn't the ministers preach Tuesday night? They did a great job. They did a great job. All right, I just want to say this. Sorry. All right, I gave y'all some moment. So anyhow, so Jesus, the friends went to him, and they said, Jesus is preaching. I mean, Jesus, I mean, he is preaching the word. And they're talking to this paralyzed man. He said, okay, that's good. What's he saying? And they said, oh, he's talking about be people being healed. He's talking about people being set free. He's talking about some changes going on in people's life. He said, they say, oh, you should hear it. And he said, I, I, I would if I could. I would like to hear him. They said, you got to hear the gospel. You've got to hear what's going on over there. He said, I would, but I, I can't. I can't. And the first thing he says is, I would if I could, but I can't even motivate myself. I can't even motivate myself. He said, I have been paralyzed so long. I have been in this condition so long that I don't even know if it's possible for me to be different. I have been in the same condition for so long that you're telling me that I need to come to church, but I am so used to my paralyzed state that I can't even imagine myself better than what I've been in. You are telling me that I should come to growth point, and you are telling me that it's something different, but I don't even know what different looks like because I've been paralyzed so long that this is all I know. This is the only life I have ever experienced. All I know is hearing gunshots at night. All I know is knowing how to smoke stuff. All I know is knowing how to do it this way and gamble and cheat. I don't know another way. And you telling me there's something better and I don't know anything better. I don't know how to motivate myself beyond this. I don't know how to move beyond this. I don't know how to get beyond my struggles. And you telling me to come here Here's somebody that I ain't never met before. You telling me to come just here, hear Jesus, and I'm like, who is he? But all you keep telling me is he's preaching a word, but what word is gonna change me? What word is going to make me better? It's hard for me, and here it is, as far as people that have had paraplegia, when I looked up, it says those people who have experienced this, most of them experience paraplegic symptoms by a car wreck. They had a car wreck. They had a fall. Violence due to gunshot. There were sports or rec recreational activities or medical or surgical injury that caused them to be paralyzed. So you are telling me to come to church, but you're not even telling me how to deal with, got, with what got me here in the first place. Amen. 
So you telling me to come to Growth Point, but you ain't never talked to me about what paralyzed me. Somebody dropped me. I would not be laying here if somebody didn't drop me. I would not be in this position if I didn't allow somebody to handle me a certain way and now I'm sitting here dropped and you telling me to come to church and I'm like the church is who dropped me in the first place. The pastor is who dropped me in the first place and you telling me to come try it again and I'm paralyzed because of the last fall. They said it was an accident but the accident made me wounded. They said they didn't mean to do it, but what they didn't mean to do has caused me to be in this state, and I can't move forward. And while y'all are sitting here speaking in tongues, I'm paralyzed. And while you sitting here saying the pastor ain't in it, I'm saying, can somebody get me out of it? Because I'm paralyzed, and I'm uncomfortable, and all you can do is tell me to come to church? I'm trying to motivate myself. And it's hard to motivate yourself when all you thought, when you thought what you were dealing with was temporary, but then it became permanent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When what I thought was just going to be a temporary inconvenience yeah. turned out to be seven years of hardship. What I thought was just going to be temporary laid off of work for a short period of time has now caused all types of inconvenient financial difficulties in my life. And you're telling me to come to church and what was temporary has now become permanent. And I can't even praise right now because I'm thinking about what I still owe. <laughs> I can't even worship right now because I'm thinking about all the people that I'm not even answering the phone for because I'm owing so many people and I don't have any money to even pay any of them back. And you telling me to come to church and I'm paralyzed. Can't even motivate myself beyond this situation. Trying to hear the worship team, but I can't hear the worship team because half of them paralyzed too. So I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Have a hard time hearing other people tell me what I can become and they just as paralyzed as I am. How are you going to help me? Because if I'm going to get help, that means you're going to have to show me some physical therapy. But you can't show me physical therapy because you ain't working out yourself. How are you going to help me? I'm so uncomfortable. All I can do is turn from side to side. Can't even move. So uncomfortable. My outfit looks nice, but I'm paralyzed. <laughs> I can dress up, but I'm paralyzed. And it's hard because I'm getting bed sores because I've laid here so long. And it's uncomfortable. You turn me on my right side and I'm uncomfortable. You turn me on my left side and I'm uncomfortable. You tell me to lay straight, I'm uncomfortable because I can't even go to sleep. So I'm restless all the time. I'm trying to go to church, but I'm restless. You come over here and you actually irritate me more than you help me. Because you keep talking church talk and you ain't even talking about what got me here in the first place. The daddy that dropped me. The mama that dropped me. The cousin who came in. And you said they were going to watch me because y'all were going to the movies. But wound up molesting me. You won't talk about the fall. Talk about what got me laying here stuck. I'm trying to motivate myself and I can't motivate myself. <laughs> trying to move forward and you tell me to come here a word you know how angry I am at the church yes. I'm trying to motivate myself and I can't motivate myself I can't move unless somebody else moves me you look at somebody and say help them so he's sitting there he said I want to move but I can't so it says these friends came over. His friends came over and they said, hey, let's, let's get him. He said, I can't motivate myself. And the next thing, after he said he couldn't motivate himself, and, we, and that's a hard place. That's a hard place just to be able to motivate you. Do y'all know how difficult it would be for me to motivate y'all if I hadn't motivated myself first? Right. 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 I cannot do what I do publicly if I don't do this privately. Some of you are trying to worship publicly and you don't worship privately. The 
last time you picked up your Bible was last Sunday. If you don't have a private worship, you can't do public. If you don't have a private delivered life, you can't publicly deliver me. So he's saying, I'm coming to help these people come and say, you need to hear the gospel. He said, I do, but I just want to be motivated again. Take me back to the place where things were okay. But I've been in this spot so long, I don't even know what motivation looks like anymore. These are the things that the people you're connected to are saying. And we turn a deaf ear to it. That's why a lot of us are looking like this, like, oh, mm -hmm. Because people are paralyzed and we just walk on like it ain't no big deal, not okay. But people are paralyzed and they want to be motivated. Someone say they want to be motivated. The next thing he said is, he says that these people, they took them. After they took them, they said, all right, we're going to get you out of here. You might be not be able to motivate yourself, but we're going to motivate you. He says, he said, but we got to get you there. He said, well, I would get there if I could. He said, but I can't even mobilize myself. <laughs> the second thing is not only can I not motivate myself, but the second thing, I can't even mobilize myself, meaning I don't even know how to move. My legs are stuck. All I know is how to turn from one side to the other side. I don't know how to move myself. How, how, how do I move myself out of this bed? How, how do I even move into the blessings of God? I got saved, I got baptized, but ain't nobody helped me since I got baptized or saved. <laughs> You brought me up to the altar, told me to call on Jesus' name three times. I call on his name three times, and ain't nothing happened. Yes. Yes. Told me to speak in another tongue because it was required for me to get to heaven. And I spoke in another tongue, and I'm still paralyzed. Still paralyzed. Still paralyzed in apostolic. Still paralyzed in Pentecostalism. Still paralyzed in holiness. And all I'm doing is rolling around on a carpet, and I'm just paralyzed. 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 And you tell me to call call on his name and you ain't say, you ain't really baptized until you baptize in Jesus name and I've been baptized in Jesus name and I'm still paralyzed still 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 paralyzed and you and you telling me to do church stuff and it ain't helping me it ain't, I can't even mobilize myself I can't even move forward I can't mobilize myself I can't even move do you know how many people I'm talking to right now that can't move you know how many people are trying to fidget in their seat right now because you can't move? All you got is to depend on your upper strength to even move your body. And you're trying to move, but you can't move. And it's irritating because all you can do is just akin to move forward. And you can't even move because your legs are stuck. Yes. Trying to move. Trying to do church stuff. And it ain't helping me. It ain't helping me. I can't even mobilize myself. So these people look beyond him. They said, don't worry about it. You can't move yourself. We'll move you. It says that they picked up this man. They took him to the crowd that I told y'all about. Took him to the crowd that I told them about. And it says, and when they got there, it says that there was so, there was no room because nobody else could get in. Hallelujah. It says nobody else could get in because it was crowded. But these friends, Miss Angela, these friends, they said, you know what? I know that we could turn around. But we know that you need this more than we do. <laughs> We know that what's inside that door is better than what you're struggling with. We know we can't turn around right now. So the paralyzed person said, well, how are you going to get me in there? I've tried to move forward before and got stuck. I've tried to move forward before and I got stuck. They told me to do this and I tried that and it didn't work. So you might as well turn me back around because it's not going to work this time. And they said, you know what? If we can't get you through the front door, we'll take you on top of the roof. <laughs> they said, I ain't never heard of anybody taking me on side of the roof. They said, because you ain't never heard of what deliverance really looks like. <laughs> deliverance means you got to be desperate. Mm -hmm. Real deliverance means that you got to cut your way in there if you got to get there. Whatever you got to do to get there, you mean I got to get there. Look at somebody say, I got to get there. I, I, I got to get there. So they went on side on top of the roof and they cut a hole. Yeah. <laughs> Lowered him down. <laughs> and y'all think I'm talking about the paralyzed person. I'm talking about when's the last time you got desperate for your friend? 
friends. When's the last time you got desperate for the people you connected with? I know they bitter. I know they angry. But when have you cut a hole in a roof to get them closer to Jesus? When's the last time you looked past their anger? When's the last time you looked past what they're going through and said, I got to get you in there. If I got to drag you in there, I'm going to get you in there. Some of us were on drugs longer before you knew you were on drugs. Your mama drug you to church. Your mama drug you to prayer meeting. Your mama drug you to Bible study. You didn't look at somebody and say, I'll put you on drugs if I got to because I got to get you to Jesus. They cut a hole. They said, I'm going to lower you. <laughs> he said, now don't drop me when you lower me. Because <laughs> the last time somebody tried to pick me up, they dropped me. <laughs> he said, there's four of us this time. We got you covered on each end. <laughs> when is the last time somebody covered me? <laughs> When is the last time somebody covered me and prayed for me? Knew that I was paralyzed but covered me anyway. Knew that I was a mess but covered me anyway. When is the last time somebody knew I was on the verge of suicide but covered me? When is the last time somebody knew I couldn't pay bills but, but they covered me? Last time somebody spotted me. Last time somebody was there for me. When's the last time you were there for somebody? When's the last time you really were concerned? When is the last time you asked how somebody was doing and you stood there to see how they were actually doing? Because a lot of us say, how you doing? I'm fine and we just go on. But when is the last time you looked in somebody's eyes and you said, something's not right? Something's not right. Stop, 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 stop for a minute. I don't want to talk. No, no you're going to talk today. Something's going on. That's what I miss about the older people, Mr. Leon. Because older people didn't care nothing about what you said. They would say sit down something's wrong if you walked wrong they would say something was wrong if you came in church and looked like something was wrong they were like sit down baby I'm like sit down baby that was not a suggestion that was a command sit down when is the last time you sat somebody down, put your phone aside, and actually had a real conversation with somebody to see what was really going on? How dare we have people committing suicide on our watch and we're not even asking how they're doing? Do you know that that one guy, I can't remember his name, Dylan, uh, Dylan Roof or whatever, I can't remember the guy. Do you know that before he shot that church, he was in Bible study? in a prayer meeting. How many people are praying but still sleep? Doing church but don't even recognize when the enemy is right beside you. Having a good time but can't even discern the wicked plots of the enemy. Shouting, dancing, speaking in tongues but can't even see when the devil has walked in the room. Jesus, God, the Father, when he was in heaven, it says that even in the midst of the praise and worship service, he said, devil, what have you to do here? Yes. You have to worship with one hand and fight with the other. If I wasn't paralyzed, I would run. But you have to be able to be able to shout with one hand and have a weapon in the other. Look at somebody say, I'm ambidextrous. Some of y'all don't know what that word is. That's a Howard University word. I'm ambidextrous. Ambidextrous means I know how to do two things at one time. I know how to praise and fight when I need to fight. I know how to pray and fight. I'm not wicked. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I know how to pray and watch. I pray with one eye closed and one eye open. I'm watching the devil while I'm praying. Yes. Say it again, I'm ambidextrous. Amen. You go home, teach your children that word, I'm ambidextrous. You go home and say, what did you learn today, ambidextrous? He said, I don't know how to mobilize myself. So they, they cut a hole. They cut a hole in the roof and they lowered him down so that he would be able. And then one of the other things, the side effects of being a paraplegic is <laughs> not only have I lost mobility in my lower extremities, but it also causes me to go through mood changes. <laughs> Because it's one thing for me to be laying like this all the time. That's one thing. But can you imagine laying in the same spot all the time and how that affects my mood? Yes. Some of you think people are rude just because they want to be rude. Some people are rude because they've never moved. Yeah. 
Some people are nasty because they've never been moved. They, they've never shifted out of where they've been and they don't know anything different and they've always been this way and it affects their mood. How they want to move forward but don't know how to move forward. So they don't know any other way but to be bitter and to be nasty and to be angry and to be mad. And they're not mad at you. They're mad at their condition. It's not you. It's not the church. It's not the worship team. It's not anybody. They're not mad at you. They're not mad at your church. They're mad because they want to they want to believe you, but they have a hard time believing because they can't move. And they're tired of false prophets. Tired, tired of false prophets speaking things over them that will never happen. Saying that these things, you, you're going to walk again. Well, how? You know how many people lie to people just to get what you want out of them? But when you've been laying like this for a long time, you have heard all the lies you can hear. And it can make you bitter. Well, you're like, I don't have time for you to tell me my, my shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I don't want you to come here tell me, lying to me about something that's not going to happen. I can't move. And it affects, not only that, Sarah, not only does it affect my, my mood, but it also causes me weight gain because I'm not able to exercise. I'm not able to move. So it's one thing for me to be paralyzed in my legs, but now I'm paralyzed and now the longer I lay here, the more weight I get. So it's one thing for me to fight one area, but what happens when I'm fighting one area, but other layers just keep being added on to me? Things that I thought were gone in my childhood are not gone in my childhood. Now they're going up into my adulthood, and now it's just more and more weight. And I want to talk to some people who are just weighted. Yes. Well, you're trying to move forward, but you can't move forward because the weight is so hard. The weight is so difficult. It's hard for you to move forward because you're so weighted down. You got so much luggage that nobody wants to help you carry it. You got so much luggage going on in your life that nobody want to help you unpack. They want to talk about it, but nobody wants to help you. Yeah. Because you got so much weight. You're bloated. You're backed up and you just want something to move, but can't nothing move because it's just everything's just settling. And it's so uncomfortable. I don't know who I'm ministering to today, but you're trying to move, but you're so weighted. Trying to smile, but it's hard to smile because the weight pulls it to a frown. You're trying to reach out to people, but it's hard for you to reach out to people because you're like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Trying to hug people, but you don't want to be hugged. You just want to be left alone because you're weighted. You don't want any new friends. Don't want to learn nobody else. Don't want to be in a small group because it's like to be in a small group means I got to learn new people. And I don't want to learn no new people because I'm just weighted. Leave me alone in my weights. Weights are supposed to be designed to build you, not to weigh you down. Look at someone say, I can't be weighed down anymore. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Next thing is, it says that they, they brought him, they brought him, verse again, they said they, they brought him, they lowered him in the roof, and it says that then Jesus responded to them, Jesus responded to them, and it says, Jesus said, when he saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he says to the man, he said, your sins are forgiven. It's one thing that the man can't motivate himself. He can't mobilize himself. But why are you important? Because he can't minister to himself either. Unless you bring me to hear the gospel, how am I going to hear it? He said, I'm looking, I'm, the man, the people, the friends said, I got to get you to Jesus because the state you're in, you can't even help yourself out of it. He said, I can't even minister to myself if I wanted to. I can't motivate myself. I can't mobilize myself. I can't even minister to myself. It says, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. He says he saw their faith. What that means is when you have faith, it can be seen. <laughs> faith is not a feeling. Faith is an action. <laughs> faith is an action word. Faith is not just a noun. Faith is an action word. Show me your faith by what you do. Show me what
what you believe in. Come here, Raquel. Come here. No, 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 no. Come here. I didn't mean like that. But come here. I'm talking about here it is. This man. I didn't mean come here. I don't know what I meant. You know, the man, the Peter, was sitting in the boat with the other disciples. I was talking to your situation. He was sitting here in the boat. And it says that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the storm, it says that they looked out on the water and they said, Jesus, is that you? And then some of them said, no, that's just an apparition. That's just a ghost. That's not Jesus. But it says that one of the disciples said, Lord, if that's you, command me to come out to you. Yeah. Faith says, I don't know if it's you, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. Faith said, I'm not sure, but I'm at least going to make some movement. Faith said, I'm not sure when I'm going to overcome this, when I'm going to get through this, but I'm going to at least make some movement while I'm in between seasons. Look at someone and say, keep making movement movement. I've got to keep moving even when I'm not sure. Even when I don't know what's going on, I've got to keep moving. I cannot stay stuck. Can't stay stuck. I can't stay here. I've got to move. Lord, I'm not sure. But Lord, if it's you, if it's you, command me to move from here. So when they lowered him, Jesus saw their faith. He said, your sins are forgiven. That means, now this is what's interesting, Jay Sean. This is interesting. This is just my, you know, my study and talking here. What's interesting to me is, you mean to tell me that what I'm dealing with might be attributed to sin? <laughs> You mean to tell me, he said, your sins are forgiven you. That means maybe it wasn't my sin, but maybe the sins of somebody else that I'm dealing with. It's not the thing that I might have done, but maybe it was the thing that somebody else did to me that has put on me, that now I'm struggling with something that I didn't even bring on myself, and now you're saying your sins will forgive you. Maybe it's a generational thing that they thought wasn't even that big of a deal, but now it's handed down to me, and now I'm dealing with and struggling with something that I never even, I was born into unfortunate situation. That's why the Bible says, in sin, did my mother conceive me? Maybe I was born into something that I didn't even do. <laughs> So you say, now my sins be forgiven me. I didn't even know I had sinned. Yeah. I didn't even know the thing that I'm struggling with is not even on me. It was put on me. Yeah. I didn't know that the thing I'm struggling with was not something that was in me, but it was something that was placed on me. And they didn't deal with it, but I'm dealing with what mama did. I'm dealing with what daddy did. I'm dealing with what uncle did. I'm dealing with what the church did because sin has now come upon me and I didn't even bring it on myself. So I can't even mobilize myself. I can't even minister to myself because I can't even get off the scent of what somebody else put on me. I've taken a whole bunch of showers and I can't even seem to get the scent of sin off of me. I'm trying to go through the motion, but the scent is still on me. <laughs> Everywhere I go, the scent is on me. It's just stuff that I didn't even put on myself and I'm trying to get off, but I can't minister to myself. It says that when Jesus saw him, he said, your sins are forgiven you. And he forgave the man's sins. What's interesting about that, Brother Dwan, is that Jesus didn't say, you're healed. Seems like when you look at my condition, seems like the first thing you would say is, you healed. But you can't be healed until you first get delivered. Don Trees grabbed this microphone from my hand. You cannot be healed yes. until you first get delivered. Oh. A lot of people want to get healed and get delivered later. But you can't be healed until you get delivered. You cannot get those areas of your life healed until you walk through deliverance. Until you have a touch from Jesus. Until you go through freedom courses. Until you talk about stuff you never talk about. Until you deal with things you don't want to deal with. Until you deal with those emotions in your life. Until you deal with those habits until you get delivered you can't be healed yes. salvation comes before healing yes. you got to have the cross before you have deliverance so we keep having these deliverance services but we don't have healing services we have deliverance services meaning come up and do all this these shenanigans and all that stuff that's not deliverance real deliverance is this Shashan confess your faults one to another Miss Bridget, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Tell 
Tell the truth. Tell what you're dealing with. Tell what you're struggling with. Tell what's going on. Then you're going to get healed. As long as you keep your mouth closed, you will not be healed. As long as you keep playing church games, you will not be healed. As long as you keep smelling like weed but covered up with perfume, you will not be healed. But until you say my lips are black because I smoke, not because of the gum I put in my mouth. My lips are black because I got a habit. Tell the truth. I got cut on my arms because I'm suicidal. Not because I'm trying to get, not because I'm, not because I'm trying to get something on my arm. I'm cutting my arm because I want to die. That's why these cuts are on my arm. That's why I'm going through. That's why I look like this. Tell the truth. Come on, Miss Donna. Tell the truth and you can get some help. Look at somebody and say, tell the truth. But the movie from A Few Good Men say you can't handle the truth. Can you handle when I tell you what I'm really struggling with? Can you handle when I really tell you what's going on with me? Can you handle what's really in my browser or on my phone? Can you handle it? Can you, help, can you handle my nastiness? Can you handle stuff I don't deal with? Can you handle when I take off my makeup? Can you handle when I take out my weave? Can you handle when I take off my socks and I got a bunch of cords? Can you handle all of me? Because you like to put together me. But that's just what I show you. Because if I show you my real truth, you might not be my friend. But for where I'm going, I need some help. Somebody say, I need some help. And I've got to tell you the truth. My car was repossessed because I didn't have the money to pay for it. The reason I'm eating the same thing is because I don't have, I don't know how to cook. I'm not fronting. I'm just telling you the truth. My mom's been dead for a long time, but I still go to her, I go visit her every single day because I, I, I'm not ready to deal with life without her. I'm having a hard time. I'm in growth point, but I'm still thinking about the church I just came out of. The reason I can't be a minister is because I'm still thinking about how they suppressed me in the other church. I cannot serve here because I'm still thinking you're going to drop me too. You tell me to tell my story as we go into our third anniversary, but I don't know if I put my story really on social media would anybody really like it. So I don't tell my story, so I keep quiet. But the Bible says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Look at somebody say, say something. You can't be healed until you get delivered. You can't be healed till you get delivered. You can't be healed till you get delivered. Somebody just say it with me. You can't be healed till you get delivered. Say it, make it personal. I can't be healed till I get delivered. Say I can't be healed till I get delivered. And I don't want to go through all of 2018 bound. I want to get delivered. If it makes me uncomfortable, deliver me. If it makes me abandoned, deliver me. If you have to remove all my friends, deliver me. If you have to remove everything, deliver me. Because I need something. I need, I need, I need, I need to get to Jesus. I, I got to get to Jesus. If we don't have another song, get me to Jesus. If we don't have another praise break, get me to Jesus. If we don't ever have another laying hands to serve, get me to Jesus. Because I need to be delivered. I got to be delivered. I got to be delivered. I don't watch scary movies because I am the scary movie. I don't watch the movie It because I am it. I don't like to see demons because there's one inside of me. Deliver me! <laughs> Stephen King can't write my book. Stephen King can't write my movie because the stuff that's going on in my head is more horror than anything that they have ever seen on the box office films. I've got a movie inside of me. I'm struggling and I need some help. I need to be delivered and I'm scared to be delivered. Come on, Miss. That's, that's, that's what uh, that's what Mr. Alisa said. She said, what happens when I get free? What's next? And there are some of you who are sitting here saying, I want to be delivered, but what's next? What happens if I get delivered? What happens if I get delivered? from him? What happens if I get delivered from her? What happens if I get delivered from it? What will my next drug be? I got an answer for you. His name is Jesus. I'm fiending for him. I'm desiring for him. I'm itching for him. Everything that I used to have, I don't want anymore because I detoxed from that because now I want Jesus. Somebody say, I want Jesus. 
So Romans said, I'm through here. Romans said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach unless they've been sent? If you haven't been sent to me, don't come to me. I'd rather walk around crawling than you mess me up. I want to walk around looking like a fool, then you make me mess up. Then you make me worse than what I was. If you're not sent to me, don't touch me. If you're not sent to my issues, don't even pretend like you know. Don't come to me with your book knowledge. I need some street knowledge for what I'm dealing with. Don't come to me with your church talk. I need some gutter talk. I need somebody who can get down with me and get down in my place and tell me how to overcome this thing. Don't play with me. But how am I going to get to Jesus unless you come to me? But don't come to me unless he sent you to me. I may not be called to that, but I'm called to somebody. You're called to help somebody. And whoever you're called to, go to. Whoever you call to, go to. Look at somebody and say, whoever you call to, go to them. Whoever you call to, go to them. Because they're sitting around crawling and they need help. They're sitting around trying to be the best they can be, but they can't be there until you get there. That's why the gospel is important. He said, because how can they hear without a preacher? What am I preaching? Am I preaching John 3.16? Am I preaching Galatians 5.13? Am I preaching John? Am I preaching uh, Jude 23-24? What am I preaching? Preach your story. Tell them how you overcame. Tell them how you're still overcoming. Tell them how you still struggle with it, but you're still trying to get through it. Tell them the real truth. Tell them the real truth. Tell them your real story because they're going to be helped more by your story than they'll ever be helped by your gospel track. Tell them your story. Songwriter said, you don't know my story. You don't know the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain. What it took for me to get here. You'll never understand my praise. So don't even try to figure it out. But you just better know my worship is for real. Look at somebody saying, true that, true that, true that. He said he can't minister to himself. That's the last thing. I'm finished. I hope y'all enjoying the word. This last thing. It says, the thing is, Mel, it says that how do you treat paraplegia? It says every patient is different. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Kim, what works for one may not work for the next. So what that means, Courtney, is not a one size fits all. It's all the cross, but how I get to the cross might differ than your experience. So you got to be mobile. You have to make sure you're current. You need to know what's going on. You know, uh, holiness might have worked for Bryson. Holiness might have worked for, for Guillaume. Holiness might have worked for somebody else. All this stuff. I'm talking about the holiness church. It might have worked. But what about the person who does not know any of that? Baptist might have worked for some of you. Methodist might have worked for some of you. Not, not, whatever it works. But I'm saying, I don't care. Come on, Lita Adams. I don't care how you get there. Yeah. Just get here if you can. Yeah. I aged myself. A lot of y'all 40 and above. They're like, yeah, I'm Lita Adams. Some of the rest of y'all, you're like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Every patient is different. Is. What is interesting is that it says in order to treat paraplegia, you have to have surgery to correct it. Yeah. Medications, physical therapy. But in one instance, it says Jesus saw their faith. He forgave his sins. And the interesting thing is that it says that after Jesus forgave his sins, it says that Jesus looked at him and he said, he said, get up from your bed. Now what was interesting is that the church people, the Pharisees, had an issue. They had an issue. Elijah, their problem was, who are you to forgive sins? Isn't it interesting how we get caught up yes. on stuff that don't even matter? Don't stuff that don't quite I'm finished. Stuff that don't even matter. He said, he said, which was easier for me to say? 
your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk. He said, so that I can be just when I have authority to forgive sin. He said, I say your sins are forgiven and rise up and walk. <laughs> what I'm saying is, before I take away, I add more to it. <laughs> You didn't like how I reached them, I'll add more to it. He said, if you don't like that, sins, your sins are forgiven and rise up and walk. Yeah. But once the man was healed, Woo! he was able to move from here. Yeah. He said, once you got me where I needed to be, my sins are forgiven, I'm healed now. Now, what once had me, now I got it. The bed I was once laying in had me. Now I got the bed. My brothers and my sisters, I'm saying to you, your past doesn't have you. You somebody who had a past. Stop laying in what you could be carrying. I don't care how fresh it is. I don't care how it hurts you. I don't care how, but it's my past. I, I was once laying on it, but now I'm carrying it because I'm able to move from here. But in order for me to move from here, you had to help me first. I couldn't minister to myself. I couldn't, I couldn't motivate myself. I couldn't mobilize myself. But now you got me where I need to be. I can move from here. It says that after that, it says that these people looked at this man and it said, and they had never seen anything like that before. Do you know what a miracle you are? How no one in your family has seen an overcomer until you. Nobody in your family has seen someone graduate from college until you. No one in your family has seen a homeowner until you. No one has seen a survivor until you. I had a past. My past had me. But now I got my past. Do you know how much wealth is in you? How much, how much strength is in you? The things that could have killed and destroyed you. Things that should have. Mel, my wife and I were talking about that. We were talking about just this morning, I think. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. Our days roll over into each other. That's how love is. <laughs> I'm saying, have you ever taken a moment to think about what could have happened? I mean, I know you're saying things are really bad, but you know how much worse it could have been? Do you know how hard it could have been? You got marks, but you could have had a casket. that other people didn't overcome but you did you you they said you OD'd but why are you still here the other people OD'd and we had a funeral other people took the same pills you took and they didn't even wake up but you took the pills and, and God sent a doctor that said pump it out their system, pump it out their system, pump it out. Do you know how much stuff has been pumped out of you? Because there was purpose inside of you. How much stuff could have killed you? But he saw life inside of you. You're talking about what it's, what it's like and how hard it is. But it could have been much more difficult. Had you not had somebody who brought you to Jesus. Had you not had somebody that ministered to you. Had you not had somebody who looked beyond your anger. And said let me help you. I see a doctor in you. I know you're having a hard time in your marriage right now. But, but, I, but, but trouble don't last always. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, Jessica, I gotta do it one more time, but she said in color purple, she said, he ain't worth it. <laughs> you gotta look at the devil sometimes and say, you ain't worth it. You ain't worth my peace of mind. You're not worth my sanity. You're not worth my life. You're not worth my distraction. You ain't worth it. Because I was paralyzed. I mean, I was dropped. I mean, I shouldn't even be having a mic in my head. I mean, I mean, I was paralyzed. But now I feel like the tin man. Slide some oil to me. Let it run down my leg. Y'all talking about the oil on the movie. I'm talking about the anointing that went right to the area of my life. I'm talking about the oil that went right to the area that I was paralyzed in. Slide some of that oil to me. Slide it to my heart. Slide it to my mind. Slide it to my issues. Shabbat I was rusty until he gave me some oil. I was stuck until he gave me some oil. Look at somebody say, he gave me some oil.